I just put four spools of filament on top of my Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer. That's four full one kilogram spools. That weighs about nine pounds in freedom units. Am I crazy for doing this? And more importantly, how badly is this going to affect print quality? We'll find out right after this. I'm Brian, and you are watching BV3D. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is known for making low-cost, high-quality printed circuit boards, but they also do CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and even injection molding. They sent me a few samples, and I gotta say, these circuit board rulers and coasters are freaking amazing. And the clear resin prints of the PCBWay logo, these are 100% crystal clear. So whether you need PCBs, machining services, or even something printed in a specialty material your printer can't handle, PCBWay can do that for you. Check them out at PCBWay.com. Hello 3D printing friends and welcome back. In my recent Bamboo Lab A1 video, I showed a printable bracket thing that allows mounting the AMS light on top of the printer. But there's some concern that having all that weight up on top will make the printer print not as good. So in this video, we're going to find out if adding up to nine pounds of weight to the gantry on the Bamboo Lab A1 has any discernible effect on print quality. But first, why would anybody want to do such a thing? The answer is simple. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the <clears throat> Sorry, space, as in how much space the Bamboo Lab A1 takes up with the four spool automatic material system off to the side of it. This solution frees up the space beside the printer. And with the extra space, you can keep a chamber pot right next to the printer so it can poop whenever it needs to. As a secondary benefit, it gets the tool heads wiring and Bowden tubes up out of the way as well. The files for this space saving system are on Bamboo Labs Maker World site. And there's a link in the description that'll take you right to it. It's about 15 hours worth of print time and a bit over half a kilogram of filament. And this is a more recent version of the mount compared to the one I used when I made my A1 video. One thing I noticed when printing with the original mount is that the printer tended to rock back and forth as the bed moved. And this is because the printer has hard rubber feet under the gantry, but it has extra squishy rubber feet at the front and the back. So this newer version of the mount includes a pair of braces that attach to the bottom of the gantry. Those braces are clamped into place when you screw them together. And they do dampen the back and forth rocking motion of the printer when the AMS light is up on top. So the reason you're watching this video is to find out whether or not all that weight on the top of the printer is going to be problematic. And here's how we're going to test it. In the A1 video, I asked people to suggest a model to print to find out if there was a difference in print quality when the AMS light was on the printer versus when it was beside it. Now, the idea is to print the model with the AMS light beside the printer and then mount the AMS light on top and print the model again. And then compare the two results to see any print quality differences. Most of the suggestions were that I print an Eiffel Tower model. So the French Tower it was. And as the name suggests, it's quite an Eiffel. So with the AMS light next to the A1, I printed this Eiffel Tower model. It took a little over 11 hours to print. It's scaled up to 250 millimeters, so it's almost the full build height. But I also printed Teaching Tech's Wobble Test because that one doesn't take a long time to print. It's only about two hours. Each on-off test then was a bit over 13 hours of print time, meaning we've got over 26 hours of test printing that went into making this video. To save time, while the A1 was busy with those test prints, I printed the new AMS light top mount on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. It was two full plates of parts, and it was about 15 hours of print time. I actually moved the set screws over to a third plate just so I could print them in this lime green all by themselves without doing a bunch of color swaps. Once it was all printed, it only took about 10 or 15 minutes to remove the supports, get it assembled, and mount it to the printer. There's a build video on the model's Maker World page, so you'll be able to easily get it installed. It does require two of the screws you removed from the printer when setting it up, the long ones that look like this. 
You'll also need eight M3 by 10 screws to clamp the rear braces to the gantry and these you'll need to supply yourself. If you don't have some M3 by 10 screws handy, I've got links in the description to some screw assortments on Amazon that can be useful when working on projects like this. And you'll reuse the screws that connect the AMS light to its base to attach it to the printed mount, so no extra parts needed for that at least. And so with the AMS light on top, it was time to repeat the two test prints. Another 11 plus hours for the Eiffel Tower and another two plus hours for the wobble test. Now let's put them side by side and compare them. Here's the front. The left side. the back, the right side, and the front again. They look exactly the same to me. Can you tell which one is which? Well, keep watching. I'll tell you in a couple of minutes. But first, let's look at Teaching Tech's wobble test. Here's the front of the tower. The left side. the back, the right side, and the front again. So what I wanna know is, can you tell which is which? Pause the video and leave a comment to tell me which Wobble Tower and which Eiffel Tower, the one on the left or the one on the right, was printed with the AMS light on top of the printer. And tell me what you saw that tipped you off. Now I'll wait for just a few seconds while you do that. Okay, ready? If I hadn't written which was which on the models, I wouldn't know. I'm not kidding, I can't tell these apart. But here's the answer. Both the Teaching Tech Wobble Tower and the Eiffel Tower on the right were printed with the AMS light on top of the printer. So as crazy as it sounds, printing with the AMS light on top of the printer doesn't seem to affect print quality. I mean, yes, the printer does move more with the AMS light up top, but it prints just as well as it does when it's next to the printer. I was honestly expecting to see some sort of difference, but I genuinely can't tell the prints apart. So, based on results and based on keeping the Bowden tubes and the wiring better controlled, I'm going to leave the AMS light mounted on top. That's where it lives now. Big thanks to everyone who supports the channel, whether with channel memberships or by using the links in the description. If you liked this episode, give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe so you don't miss new ones. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this one. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool.